Hey guys, this is lesson 39. We are going to be solving word problems involving fractions. This specific lesson, you do have a worksheet that goes with it, so you can go ahead and take that out. But in addition to that worksheet, please make sure you have your notebooks because you will be writing down everything that's on the board. So I will expect you to write down the word problems if you don't have them copied onto your paper. If you like, you can use the back of your paper to take notes this time if that helps you. All right, so again, lesson 39, solve word problems involving fractions. We are going to use the RWD method to solve these word problems. RWD stands for read, write, and draw. When we read, you're going to read the problem twice, circle important numbers, and underline the question. All right, so for the read step, you read the problem twice, circle important numbers, and underline the question. For the write, you are going to write a number sentence representation of your answer. And last for draw, you're going to draw a picture or a model of your answer. If you need to pause the video to get that all down, go ahead and do that now. So this is your first problem. Yes, you need to copy this down. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to copy it down because you need to practice the read, write, draw strategy. You cannot do that if it's not written down on your paper. So go ahead and pause if you need to do that. All right, so your paper should have this question on it. So it says a piece of blue yarn is five and two thirds inches long. A piece of pink yarn is five times as long as the blue yarn. Faith tied them together with a knot that used one third of a piece of each yarn. What is the total length of the yarn tied together? There's my first read. My second read I'm going to underline and circle. A piece of blue yarn is five and two thirds inches long. A piece of pink yarn is five times as long as the blue yarn. Faith tied them together with a knot that used one third of a piece of each yarn. What is the total length of the yarn tied together? All right, so let's look at this problem. I know that Faith has one piece of yarn that's blue, and that blue yarn is five and two thirds of an inch long, okay? After she had that blue yarn, she has a pink yarn that's five times that. So we're going to multiply that by five, all right? Now remember when we multiply, we're gonna multiply the whole and then multiply the fraction, okay? So five times five, plus five times two thirds. This should look familiar. This is a distributive property. If you don't remember this, go back and watch that video. Five times five is 25, plus five times two is 10, and the denominator remains the same. Now this is an improper fraction, so I need to change it into a mixed number. How many threes are in 10? Three of them are. There are nine thirds in 10. How many more thirds to get to 10? One third, so you have three and one third plus 25, don't forget this 25 here. So three and one third plus 25 is equal to 28 and one third. All right, so that's how much yarn she has together, but we're not done because we, it said that we know that she used a third of the yarn to tie the pieces together, okay? And she used a third of each. So one third of pink and one third of blue. Together, that's two thirds. 
I need to take that away from my 28 and one third because when you tie yarn together, it gets smaller. That's why we're subtracting it. So we will do 28 and one third minus two thirds. Now you have to remember the regrouping. If you don't remember subtracting a, fra a fraction from a mixed number, you need to go back and watch that video. So here I know that two thirds is bigger than one third. I need to decompose the two thirds. Remember, I want one of my numbers to be the same as this one. So it's easy to subtract, it's the same as the fraction here. And then I have one more third. I break up the 28 so I'm able to regroup. I have 27 and 3 thirds. 1 third minus 1 third, done. 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And my new whole is 27. And our unit is inches. So I just did all of the writing, so I read, I write, now I have to draw. So for my drawing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my pink piece of yarn. This is pink. And it is five and two thirds of an inch long. We got that from the problem, okay? Now I have five times that, so this is one. I have five times this in blue. So one, two, three, four, five. And all of these are blue. And they're all equal to five and two thirds. five and two thirds. All right, and then I take away one third minus one third, one third from this, one third from this, because it is the not. So that is taken away from my yarn. So my total picture, we have pink ribbon over here, here's a knot, here's a knot, blue ribbon here, five and two thirds, five times five and two thirds. This is one third here, one third here, all right? Let's move to the next problem. If you need to pause to copy this problem, please do so, because again, we're going to use the read, write, and draw method. All right, our problem is Anthony drove 35 and two fifths miles before he stopped for breakfast. He then drove five times as far before he stopped for lunch. How far did he drive before he stopped for lunch? So, here, Anthony drove five and two thirds miles before he stopped for breakfast. He drove five times as far before he stopped for lunch. How far did he drive before he stopped for lunch? All right, we just finished the read step. Now let's do the write step. 35 and two fifths is how far he drove before breakfast. All right, he now drove five times farther before he stopped for lunch, all right? So I'm going to break up these, okay? The fraction and the whole, just like we do with distributive property. 35 times five plus two fifths times five. 35 times five, I'm going to do over to the side because I don't know it on the top of my head. 15, 16, 17, 175 plus what is two times five? That is 10, the denominator stays the same. Now this is an improper fraction, so we need to change it into a mixed number. How many fives are in 10? Two, 10 tenths. And there are zero remainders, right? So I have 175 plus two is 177 miles. But that's only before lunch. He also stops 35 before breakfast. Remember our question is, how, how far did he drive before he stopped for lunch? 
So you have 177 miles before he stopped for lunch. Now let's do our draw. Okay, we're um, going to draw a car. This is my version of a car. It looks more like an animal. Probably should like make it look like that. That might make it look more like a car. There we go. And then we have a window. And there's Anthony. Okay, and he is driving. And we know that he's driving five times what he drove for lunch, so five or before breakfast, five times 35 and two fifths. Alright? And that gives you a total of 177 miles. All right, let's do our last question. Please go ahead and copy this. If you um, need to pause the video, go ahead and do so. All right, let's read it together. Mrs. Jemison's car needs five and five tenths gallons to fill the tank. Mr. Jemison's truck needs three times as much gas. If Mrs. Jemison pays $3 per gallon for gas, how much would it cost to fill the car and the truck? So Mrs. Jemison needs five and five tenths gallons to fill the tank of her car. Mr. Jemison's truck needs three times as much gas. If Mrs. Jemison pays $3 per gallon for gas, how much would it cost to fill the car and the truck, all right? So we know that my car needs this much gas. Mr. Jemison's car needs three times that. If we're to fill both of them, we need the total amount of gas for both, and then we have to pay, okay? And per means to multiply, all right? So let's get started to figure out first how much gas both of our cars need. So I have five and five tenths in my car. Mr. Jemison needs five, or sorry, three times that. All right, remember we're going to break up the whole and the fraction to solve this problem, just like we did in the previous ones. Five times three and five tenths times three. So we have 15 plus three times five is 15. Denominator stays the same tenths. Now this is an improper fraction. We need to change it into a mixed number. How many tens are in 15? Just one. So you have 10 tenths and 5 plus 10 is 15. So I have 1 and 5 tenths. If I put these two numbers together, I have 16 and 5 tenths. So that's how much gas it will take. But is that how much money it will cost? Because cost is money. No, this is just the gas. So now we have to find the cost. And when you go to a gas station and you fill up your gas, it's costing you money for every gallon you put in there. So if we put 16 and 5 tenths gallons of gas in both of our cars, it's going to cost $3 for one gallon, $6 for two gallons, $9 for three gallons, or we could just multiply because it would be repeated addition. So 16 times 5 tenths times $3 to find the cost. We have 16 times 3 plus 5 tenths times 3. Okay, I don't know 16 times 3 off the top of my head, so I'm going to do it to the side. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. So 48 plus 5 times 3 is 15 tenths. We just did this. 15 tenths is equal to 1 and 5 tenths, right? 10 tenths and 5 tenths. So we need to take 48 and 1 and 5 tenths, put them together, and then we have 49 and 5 tenths of a dollar. Now, 5 tenths of a dollar, that doesn't really exist, right? So we need to change this into a decimal form. So we have 49 and 5 tenths, or $49.50, all right? Now let's draw our picture. So we're going to try and draw a car again. Yeah, that one was a little bit better. 
All right, here is our car, okay? And then here is Mr. Jemison's truck. The trucks have like the big thing on top, there we go. Here's a wheel, here's a wheel, and here's a window, okay? So the car, that takes five and no, sorry, three and five tenths. No, 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 sorry, five and five tenths of a gallon. Okay, the truck takes five and five tenths times three. All right, so that's the amount of gas both of them take. But if we want to put gas in it, the cost is $3 per gallon. So we're going to have to take both of these numbers together and times it by three to get our final answer, all right? Your homework tonight is to use the RWD process to solve these three problems. This is already on your worksheet, already given to you, so you don't have to recopy them. Keep up the hard work and we will see you tomorrow.